Hey everyone, this is Anna. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. I'm doing a video today uh, just to give some more information about the vintage watercolor technique that I've been using on my projects. Um, here's a couple cards that I made using the technique. And then here's another one. So you can see that the images are stamped in a brown ink and then they are watercolored with um, some kind of spontaneous uh, results. So I'll get in, um, go ahead and tell you a little bit more information about the technique. Um, I learned the technique on the Split Coast Stampers. Uh, it's uh, splitcoaststampers.com and they have a technique forum there. And I learned this technique years and years ago. Um, and I've just loved uh, doing it ever since. It um, takes advantage of uh, the ink in an elegant writer uh, speedball pen. And this is in the color black. And it also takes advantage of um, the reactability of distress inks. You can use other inks that are um, activated by water, but um, since I have this handy, this is the one I usually use. But you could use other colors too. It um, doesn't have to be just vintage photo. You could try using um, like um, walnut or um, you know any, any of the other distress inks that are activated by water. So this just happens to be my favorite one. So um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and stamp an image here. I'm going to be using, um, I'm trying to cl clear a little space out of my way here. I'm going to be using a cute little bear image that I drew for Whippersnapper. Um, since it's mounted here in my Misty. And so what you do is you uh, stamp your image in that um, ink that's activated by water. And like I said, I like to use the Vintage Photo Distress Ink. And I like to stamp it several times, which is um, one of the nice things about using a stamp positioner. Um, you can use the Misty, you can use the Stampin' Up! version. Um, you could even use a Stampamajig, uh, which is old school stamp positioner, which, wor which works really nice actually for wood mounted uh, blocks. Um, but what I generally do is stamp about three times and get a nice amount of ink there. What this does is it gives me enough ink to work with for this process um, while also allowing some of the ink to maintain the lines. And the other reason I like uh, using a stamp positioner is uh, if you get a little heavy handed with your water um, and you kind of obliterate some of the details of your stamped image, you could actually go back and stamp it again once you have uh, your project finished. I'll show you how to an example of that. So there is my stamped image. I'm just going to move my Misty off to the side here. Um, the image that I'm using is this one here. It's called Bentley's Birthday and it's from Whippersnapper. Just if you're curious. So I've stamped my image several times and now what I'm going to do is I'll add uh, the Speedball Elegant Rider ink. Um, to the image and I'll just add it here and there. It doesn't take a lot. Uh, you want to be kind of careful because it can get a little overwhelming, especially for small spaces. But I'll show you what this ink does. Um, while the line comes out uh, black, when water is added to this particular ink, uh, what happens is it bleeds out to a really pretty bluish green color and even some pink. So you can see just by adding water there, it made that line bleed right out. And it actually bleeds out to a really pretty color, I think. So there you can see. Uh, you can see how that uh, black line has bled out to kind of a turquoisey color. And it even has the hints of purple right up closer to the line. And I just think that's really beautiful. So um, to take advantage of that kind of spontaneity, um, what I do is add just a little bit of the ink to my stamped image. And again, just being careful, you don't want to add too much. And you know, depending on the image that you're using, um, might determine how little or much you add. Like I, I tend to be a little heavy handed in the when I do florals um, in the leaf area, um, but I do a much lighter touch um, in the uh, actual petal area of flowers. So look how that's bleeding out. Isn't that so pretty? I think that's beautiful. And that's still wet, it's not quite done yet. So I'll just add a little more here. 
And the reason I, I kind of keep my lines close to the stamped image lines, um, because sometimes this pen doesn't bleed all the way out and I wouldn't want to have, you know, my random scribble lines um, showing in my stamped image there. So you can see I've added just a few lines, little dots and spaces. And I'm going to use just a really small paintbrush. Uh, this is a snap brush round number two. Here, I'll show you when, um, if you if you um, add water to just the ink area where you haven't added any of the um, Elegant Writer pen ink, um, it can also be very beautiful. Watercoloring with Distress inks is really nice. And there's, you know, such pretty pretty color palette available. So that gives the nice um, vintage look. But I read it, what I really like is the um, surprise of these pinks and turquoises. See, look again, it's still bleeding out and being really pretty. So. So when you add the uh, water then to the space that you've added that um, speedball ink to, not only does it bleed in with the brown, you get the surprises of the turquoises and the pinks. And I just think that's really fun. It's really fun to watch and um, it's fun to do. I think if you have, uh, if you're the kind of personality that has a really hard time with the spontaneity of watercolors and uh, you just can't handle not being able to control every little thing that happens, this may not be the technique for you. <laughs> um, it is a very spontaneous technique, which is probably why I love it so much. Um, I think the the motion of the inks reacting with the water, I think, is always just so beautiful and fun. How cute he is so far. And I'm going to add a little bit of color here to his nose. And sometimes you don't even have to do all that much painting. You just kind of have to add water and let the inks pull into the pool of water and do what they're going to do. You know, I'm really just blobbing some water in his nose there and adding water up to the right up to the line and it's just pulling that ink out and uh, doing what it's going to do. So I think that's really cute. Um, so the other thing that you can do once you have um, your image like this, you can add more color. Um, I've been using the Der the uh, Derwent Inktense colored pencils. These are an ink-based colored pencil, and when they're activated with water and then they dry, they actually become permanent. Um, so what I like to do is add color with these because then when I spritz my project later to add you know my background text or to blur out these lines a little bit more, the color that I've added with these colored pencils um, tends to stay put and it doesn't get too crazy and bleed all over the place. So um, that's one of the reasons I really like using these pencils um, is for their permanency once they've dried. And they have really bright, intense colors, so it really doesn't take a lot um, to uh, achieve the effects there. I think he's cute. Um, so you also um, sometimes can get a little heavy-handed with the water and you can kind of obliterate your stamp lines. And um, if that happens, one of the nice things about using a stamp positioner is you can um, actually re-stamp the image. You can stamp it in a darker ink like black. Um, you can stamp it over in the same ink. Um, maybe, you per maybe you stamp it, if you stamped it in brown originally, you could stamp it in a different brown. Um, Just to, just to uh, capture the details of the stamped image again. So here I'm kind of losing the detail of his face here just by adding so much water. So what I will do then to pull out those details again is I'll stamp him over again once, uh, once he's dried. Okay, so my bear is dry now. And um, I've kind of lost all the details of his face. 
And so what I want to do is go ahead and stamp him over again. There, I just want to show you again the really beautiful colors that those two lines bled into. Isn't that neat? I just think it's the coolest thing. Um, so because I've used my stamp positioner, I can go ahead and set my image back into my Misty here. And I think I'll stamp it over in brown again and see how that looks. Um, see if I like it or if I need to maybe pull out some of that um, detail in his face just by adding a little bit of black. So let's see what that's like. I think that will do it. Now I can show you what he looks like now. Isn't he cute? So I hope this video was helpful. Um, I will put some links down below in the description box. I'll put um, a link to the paper that I use, the watercolor paper that I use. I'll put a link to the speedball pin that I use, um, the uh, ink tense pencils, and to the brushes. And um, I think that's pretty much it. So um, again, hope it was helpful. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I will love would love to hear from you. So until we chat again, have a good day. Bye.